You can have the number one stock trading strategy in the world and you still won't make any money in the stock market if you are unable to find the types of stocks that fit your strategy. So in today's video, I'm going to go over how to create stock scanners within Thinkorswim and not just one type of any specific stock scanner, but in general, a full tutorial of how you would create a scanner to scan for the types of stocks that fit your specific strategy. So if you all could please hit the like button for me, it really does help. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're new, we'll jump right into the content. So let's start from a blank stock scanner. First things first, if you don't know how to get here within your Thinkorswim application, you're going to click on the scan tab, and then you're going to click on the stock hacker tab here, and that is going to bring you to your stock scanner. The first thing I wanna start with is the stock filters here. So if you click on add filter stock, this is going to give you a lot of your high level filters. And there's a couple of these that I run on almost every single scan that I build. They're just important sort of default filters that you're going to want to have turned on. And the first one is volume. You want to have a minimum amount of volume that you scan for so that you're not just getting a lot of these low volume random tickers that you're kind of seeing sitting here now, right? So let's just throw a number in. I'm not building any sort of real scanner right now, right? I'm just sort of giving you guys examples of how you would build a scanner. You need to take this and, and apply it to what fits for you, but I'm showing you how to do it, right? So I threw 100,000 in there as, as the minimum, right? So whenever you add a filter, uh, a stock filter, there's a min and a max, and I'm having 100,000 minimum shares of volume. So now the only thing showing on this list are obviously shares that have traded, stocks that have traded over 100,000 shares in volume. And I should say next, um, firstly, these columns are going to look a little bit different for you. I have a handful of custom columns in here that are available on my website. Uh, we're not going to go over how to set all this up exactly today, but the columns are going to look a little bit different for you. But the number one thing you should recognize is that I almost always sort my scans from volume top down. I want to see what's returned with the most volume first, right? So as you'll see here, you'll notice that is how these are being returned. Another thing I want to touch on quickly, this is drag and droppable. So if you, if you would rather do it like this, and if you're wondering what these bars are in the background, that is showing you the number of stocks you're sort of counting out, right? If you look at matches over here, it's 3,500 matches. As I drag this to lower and lower, you'll watch the number of matches go up. So that's sort of a way you can see from your filter how many stocks you're sort of cutting out, right? So as I just mentioned, I do have plenty of custom created scanners, watch list, watch list columns, all available from my website daytradingstrategies.net. Link is at the top of the description. If you go to Thinkorswim scanners, you're going to see a handful of either day trading or swing trading scanners that can easily be imported into your chart. So if you want to gain access to some already created scanners that I use personally for my trading, check out the link in the description down below. The next stock filter that I run on almost all of my scanners is last. And this is going to be the last price that was reported at the close of bar that you are scanning for. And I like to generally run for anything over 99 cents. I like to cut all the penny stock noise because if you don't know this, there are a ton of penny stocks that are listed and most of them not all please penny stock traders don't come after me but there is a lot of penny stock trash out there that it's just usually easier for you to ignore and you could do the same thing here so let's say we also don't want to see stocks over $50. We want to day trade. Maybe we have a smaller account, this, that, and the other. So this is an example of min and max. We don't want to see a lot of the penny stock trash, but we also don't want to look at a lot of the super expensive stocks. So min and 99 cents, max of $50. The Another stock filter that I almost always add is shares. And this is going to pertain to, this isn't 
float directly. This is number of total shares. Whereas you, you hear the word float thrown around a lot as number of tradable shares, number of shares that aren't locked up. There's unfortunately not a filter for float, but there is one for shares and it works in a very similar manner. So I like to come in here and let's say, let's scan for anything that is under a 20 million share float. One, two, three, one, two, three. So now these are all small float stocks as well, right? So we're scanning for stocks that have volume between a dollar and $50. And we know they are trading on a small amount of shares, which makes them more volatile. We're looking for stocks that we would like to day trade, right? So that is the kind of third and final stock filter that I always add. I will show you one more. I show you one more that I run a lot. This isn't this isn't one that's as default, but if I'm looking for stocks, uh, oftentimes as a continuation trader, I'm scanning for strong stocks. So if I want to see a stock that's up a minimum of 5% on the day, I will oftentimes add percent change in as well. So for our case, we can go ahead and do that for the filter that we're running today, just so I have something else to show you in this video. There's obviously a lot of other stock filters in here. This is not a video in which I'm going to go through what every single last one of these mean. They're not all necessarily as useful as others. I'm going to try to cover the most useful stuff in the shortest amount of time in the video here for you today. So volume, last, shares, and percent change are all these stock filters that we are going to use default on almost every single scanner we create in Thinkorswim. All right, you guys that made it this far in the video, we got through the default stock filters. We got through some of the sort of boring, yet necessary, I needed to talk about that stuff, but some of the more boring stuff. Let's talk about some of the exciting scan stuff now. This is the part where you're going to be able to literally scan for whatever you want. I want you to imagine an indicator and how you make use of an indicator in your head. Did you imagine RSI? I hope so, because that's the first one we're going to go over. But what you're going to do is you're going to go to add filter. And now we're going to, instead of stock, we're going to go to study. And then we are going to click on this pencil right here. You can do this from the drop down, but this becomes very, very ugly. You have to know what you're looking for and where you're looking for it. For me, it's much easier to just go to the pencil and then we're going to go to edit. And then from here, you are going to be able to, let me center this a little bit more for you. You're going to be able to choose from literally any study that you want. So I'm going to drop this down, go to study, any indicator that is already within Thinkorswim or any custom ones that you've created, also a ton available on my website, by the way, link in the description. Thank you for checking it out. But any indicator that you can think of, RSI. I want the RSI and just the normal plots. This allows you to change all the inputs, this, that, and the other. We're not going to dive quite that deep. The normal RSI, I want it if it crosses above uh, 80. So I'm going to use a value. And here's where you can start doing some comparisons as well. We'll do that here in a second. That'll be my next example. Let's say that the RSI, let's not do crosses above. Let's do um, actually is greater than. This is going to give us a lot more examples. Crosses above is going to be literally if it just happened on this bar. So if the RSI is greater than 50, I want that to must be true for a stock to be returned in this scan now. GBTC. Let's go load GBTC. Um, you can look at the option short trade that I took today of testing this strategy out. Um, let me load a just more uh, singular kind of chart here. GBTC. GBTC, we're going to load and we're going to load the studies. We're going to type in RSI and we are going to look at, let's remove all this other stuff. This is something that uh, more code that I'm working on. If we go look at the daily RSI on GBTC, we will see it as above 73 that is why it is on this scanner. Trey, what if I don't want the daily RSI? What if I want the 15 minute RSI, the one hour RSI? If you see this D here, <laughs> that's crazy to say out loud. Pause. This is a stock. This is a stock video, Trey. If you see this D here, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> You're going to click this. This represents daily. This represents day. If you want to look at the five minute, click the five minute. Now we run the scan again. You will see VYNE is at the top of the scan. Remember, it's at the top of the scan because it's traded the most volume today. If we go to the five minute, you will see the RSI is at 51. 
another example of, and obviously it also meets the rest of these default indicators that we've turned on. That is why it is on the scanner. Let's do a one more example. That, uh, listen, and there's a literal infinite number of things you can do with this. I'm obviously not going to sit here and, and do all of them, right? This is a YouTube video. I'm trying to make it quick. Hopefully this gets you to the point where you are able to do this stuff yourself, though, able to figure out this stuff yourself. And please, if you have any questions about how to set something up, just ask me in the comment section down below. I answer all constructive questions that I get on this YouTube channel. So let's do an example of comparing a study to a study. I know a lot of people love to do this. A lot of people love to look for a simple moving average. Uh, let's call it the, let's say the, uh, well, let's just say the nine. Sure. If the nine simple moving average is greater than the study simple moving average, um, of, uh, uh, 50. Let's do if the nine is greater than the 50. A lot of people love to look for this when they're looking at their trades. You are now comparing, let's go back to the, uh, we'll just, we'll just run this one on the five as well. Let's also run this on the five. Let's click scan vine FEMY are still all on here. If we go to studies, I'm going to turn them on real quickly so that you can see what I'm talking about. A simple moving average of nine, a simple moving average of 50, which we need to make a different color. If we go ahead and apply these, you will see that the 9 EMA, the 9 SMA, sorry, is above the 50 SMA. The RSI is above 50. It is greater than a 5% change on the day. You actually can't see, sorry, but this is up 23.3% on the day. Um, all of that is true for all of these stocks now. So you've gotten a chance to see how you can start to use indicators within your scans within thinkorswim how you can compare them directly to values how you can compare them to other indicators and hopefully this gives you a springboard a base for how far you can take studies and scanners within thinkorswim if you're interested in more of this stuff i will continuously make videos like this as it pertains to thinkorswim so just make sure you're subscribed to the channel today's video is just meant to sort of get you started, get your basin built, and we can build from here. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, more free content like this. Make sure you hit the like button. If you did enjoy, like the video. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign out of this video, but I'm going to link you all here to four steps that I would take if I had to learn day trading again as a beginner from right now.